by hitting the subscribe button all you're doing is letting YouTube know that you want to be told when there's a new video so give it a like right now rechecking a cow's foot what's important what's not important and what is the real point of rechecking do we even need to do it well watch the rest of the video hit subscribe and let's see what we're talking about So you've been and you've trimmed a cow that's got an ulcer or white line defect or tonicosis or whatever it is. Two weeks later, obviously she'll still be slightly lame. What do you do? Do you leave it? Do you pick it up? Do you re-trim it? Let's find out. So in this video, we're going to have a look at an ulcer that was trimmed two weeks ago and an ulcer that was trimmed about four weeks ago and what we did with them. I know we got its blood. It looks terrible. Looks like you're doing a bad job, but I can assure you this is going to be best for her. We have to make sure all of the stuff that's on the tips comes away. See so in here? It's black. You can actually see through it slightly. So this is unattached. Just going to gently peel it back because we don't want to take anything away that we don't have to. There we are, see everything. This is what's caused the problem, this is the ulcer. We've taken the white line back so that the regrowth should be nice and pure. Now we're just going to spray it well with iodine. And that should help to sterilise it and um, dry it up. So this is cow 1736. On the 15th of April. See, there she is, 1736. So we're going to revisit this in two weeks' time and see how she's doing. Hopefully, she's doing a lot better. Okay, here's cow 1736 back in. As you can if you'll remember, well, you will remember because you've just seen the video. <laughs> I haven't, it was two weeks ago. There was a big open sore all the way around here, and all of this horn was taken away, and we put a TP block on here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to trim out any of these loose edges here so that when the new horn grows in, it'll grow in completely sound. As you can see, it's actually very slightly still open just here, but clearly a lot, lot better than it was before. So, we're going to trim this up and let her go with that block on it. Still, it's wearing just very slightly. In fact, I'll probably grind that off. It's still perfectly in shape and perfectly in the right position, so no reason to change it. There's a slight edge here, which we're going to reduce. This is going to peel away slightly, and it's going to be most of it will come away from in here, most likely, but we really don't want to upset or aggravate this anymore. Then needs to. like I'm struggling to pair away here but I'm not, I'm just trying to be as gentle as possible. There's little 
Hard edges around this, which could be aggravating out for a little bit earlier then. And that's that. So I'm not sure if the video shows it clearly or not, but this is not an edge now. As you can see, it's just a line of dirt. It's not actually split in any way. Should heal up very nice and high. So you can see the ulcer is starting to heal well, but there's still a slight openness to it. There's a lot of hard edges around here and there's actually a bit of overrun horn here. You can see the black bit through the horn there. So what I'm gonna do is reduce this height because it still needs more time to heal, but there will be sufficient block there that will last until it's healed probably. next time this comes in this should be sound horn completely and we'll either be able to remove the block or the block will have worn down by then anyway. Using iodine like this actually helps to completely dry out the horn it disinfects and sterilizes the area and the wound but it also promotes new cellular growth as well so it's an extremely extremely useful chemical or product or um, element to use. So if you had a foot that had an extremely bad ulcer on it or a cut or whatever, you wouldn't expect just to see the doctor once and it be healed, especially if that foot was made of horn. So how can we expect cow's feet to be healed after one trim? Well, I don't think we can personally. So we do rechecks, um, which is obviously up to the farmer. But if it were me, I would recheck virtually everything that had been lame. Now the main thing is that you don't aggravate it and create a bigger problem than is now present. Obviously there was a big problem, we've got over the main hurdle, we need to promote healthy horn growth and promote the healing process without impairing it at all. And in order to do that you've got to be extremely sensitive with the new horn growth. You need to remove any sharp edges, any loose horn or anything that's going to impair and impede the actual um, regrowth of good sound horn. Now, when we do this, it's extremely important to make sure you're still following the rules of the five-step method, but you're altering it, obviously, because, well, slightly altering it, because you're not going to be trimming to the length, because you've just trimmed it two weeks before. You're not going to be modeling out, because you just did it two weeks before, but you are going to be reducing the weight from anywhere that's sore, moving the block if required, or reshaping the block if required, and you're going to be removing any loose horn, sharp edges, or anything that will actually aggravate and insult the wound further. Then you're going to make sure that you topically apply some sort of solution if the wound's still open. You might not have to because the wound might have opened up. And you're going to be extremely, extremely careful not to make the lesion too thin and make her even more sore than she is already. I promise you the knives are sharp, although they don't look it. Whenever we're re-trimming cows, because you've got to be so, so careful with what you're doing, it can look like you're kind of hacking away there. But generally, or genuinely, I am just being as careful as I possibly can be. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Let me know what you think.